Hi there. It's Angela Wolf. Welcome to Behind the Scenes. It is our regular Wednesday show. Just a 30 minutes later, I had a meeting this morning. So welcome, everyone. I hope you can still join. And again, if you're watching this on the replay, don't forget, I still go back and answer your questions. So, all right. Today is going to be a little shorter show because I have another meeting in a little bit. <laughs> I did my very bad planning today. But I have so much to share with you. So first off, let's do a Mother's Day recap. So I see you all rolling in. I uh, have enjoyed watching so many of your photos. This weekend I had a little more free time so I could scroll through our group and things like that. Oh my gosh, you guys are awesome. So first off, let's just talk about Mother's Day. I'm gonna bring something up here just to give you guys a little laugh. So, <laughs> no, these are not my children, although I would take them all. Uh, I told you I wanted 10, so that's like halfway there, right? So, these are all, not all my nephews, because I'm missing Carter, my sister's one-year-old, and she's pregnant with twins, so she's in North Carolina. She hasn't had them yet. They're not due till next month. But here we have uh, all my other nephews and my niece. Now, that picture is so picturesque. Is that the word? <laughs> so... I'm going to hear you laughing through the screen. This is right before Sugar High from ice cream. So Aunt Angie and Uncle Wynn, or Uncle Buck as they call him, we bought ice cream and five different colors of sprinkles just so they could have whatever color they wanted to, which seemed to be all of them. And let's see what else did we put on that ice cream. Chocolate. A lot of chocolate syrup, but guess what we forgot? Whipped cream. So Cody, which you always hear me say the Cody moment, he's the one on the far right. Cody comes up and he says, uh, okay, whipped cream. I forgot the whipped cream. <laughs> what do you mean you forgot the whipped cream? Uncle Wynn never forgets the whipped cream. Well, Uncle Wynn forgot the whipped cream. Then Colin comes up, the one on the far left, his brother that's older by one year, and says, okay, Where's the whipped cream? Uncle Wynn forgot the whipped cream. <laughs> I put it out on him, right? <laughs> Even though we both went to the store. So then they all got over it, right? And so the little guy in the front, Austin, who has his Daniel Tiger hat on, he was talking about ice cream and he remembered having s'mores at our cottage. So he says, chocolate, marshmallows, yum, yum. And he lifts up his shirt and says, can you see the s'mores in my stomach? That was it. The rest of the day was crazy. So we didn't care if it was raining. I told them, just run around the house as many times as you can. <laughs> so yes, we had five kids under eight at the house and we survived. I think Wynn survived. Although you can't, you might be able to tell in the picture, Wynn had a little accident while we were fishing this weekend. A diver came off. Well, a diver is something that goes on the fishing rod. It was rough. Somebody threw the rod down and the diver came swinging across. Boom. He cut his nose wide open. So poor guy. Good thing he has a tan, right? <laughs> All right, so I got to share a few more. So give me thumbs up if you had a good Mother's Day. I would love to hear what you did. So this is Allie. So we live in St. Joseph, Michigan, which is a small town, as I mentioned many times, but they have a carousel. Well, we didn't plan it very well. Well, maybe we did plan it well. I'm not sure. We were planning on going to the carousel all day, but then we got sidetracked watching the kids run around the house. Literally. <laughs> So when we got to the carousel, it was 4.30 or 4.40, and they closed at 5. So the kids got to take two rides. So here is my kid table. So my house isn't childproof. These kids don't need. So can you see? I set them all around. <laughs> that's our living room table. That's a table that Wynn had before we were married, and that thing is so heavy you can't move it. So I said, hey, kids, everybody sit down, and you can see all the parents. Say, oh my gosh, your carpet's going to be ruined forever. Oh, it'll be fine. Well, let's just say I'm still picking up chocolate, but it's all fun, right? Ice cream headaches. <laughs> and this is where I had to tell Austin to put his shirt back down. <laughs> yes, we can see the s'mores. So anyways, I wish you all a happy Mother's Day. Mothers or not, all of you that... I'm a godmother, I'm an auntie. All of you are touching somebody's life. So happy Mother's Day to you. I hope you had a great Sunday. So here is the blog post from last week, in case you missed this. This is kind of funny, all right? So let me just uh, take this off so you can see this better. 
All right, so I always have to like tell you a few comments of the week that just make me laugh. So obviously I should have posted this photo for the header for my blog because instead I posted this photo. So what do you notice about this photo? Well, it's a cute envelope. Now, one thing I did not notice because I was in a hurry when I made this and I don't think my mother noticed, but now she will because I'm announcing it live. See all those little ruffles around the edges? So I have to tell you, and I love it when people are honest. So I'm going to just tell you, I get a message on the brother. So blog that says that, well, was kind of discriminating against the ruffles around the edges. But I have to tell you, that's not the sewing machine's fault. That would mean I probably should have put my glasses on when I trimmed around it. So the big joke all day when I gave that to my mother is everyone told me that I should clean up my act and get a little more precise. So anyways, here's your blog post for the envelope. Next time that you cut out your applique, make sure that your scissors are sharp and your cheaters are on. So that is my tip for the day. <laughs> and lastly, this weekend we fished in a tournament. It feels like I haven't talked to you in like two weeks. So I had the guys take a photo of me holding this fish. Yes, no, it's not photoshopped. But I was going to post this on Instagram, and then I realized that the fish bumped me, like right there. It was not a very attractive photo. So I figured on here, it's small enough that I can share my fish. And the team Win an Angel came in third place this weekend. Whoop, whoop. So we had a great weekend. See, I think I, oh yeah, so here was my spoof for the weekend. It was very cold and very rough. Do any of you ever go on the water, go sailing or anything like that? Well, I'm wearing these gill bibs. They're very heavy. So when you walk, you pretty much get exercise on your own, just walking. And, <laughs> I, well, okay, I told you last weekend I, I put my shirt on inside out. Well, this time the guys are like, what is wrong with you? Now, we uh, we just got in from fishing. So that's why I'm a hot mess. I'm, it rained. It was rough you name it i had my bibs on backwards so the guys had to take a photo so notice how the knee pads are on the back and on the front <laughs> is the tag i wore it that way all day and that was no wonder that i kept tripping because i had a <laughs> they were just uncomfortable so there is your spoof of the day so all right let me uh i'll bring this back up in a second i just want to say um, hi to you all. I see you all rolling in. I'm just going to take a quick second. Hey, Ed, some of my fishermen friends are in here. Uh, some of my local friends are in here. Anna, wonderful to see you. Linda, Chessel, nice to see you. Linda was on the live feed last night. So how many of you give me a thumbs up or a heart or maybe you're going to watch the replay. I had the honor of being interviewed by uh, the, the sewing lab. So Don and Myra were on there last night. And I usually don't do anything at night because I'm tired. <laughs> but they had asked me a while ago, and my schedule just did not allow. So this is a perfect time of year because I'm sewing till late at night, getting all my secret projects done for brother. And they said, would you come on our show? Now, have you seen their show? It's live. They do it on Crowdcast. And then they play the replay on YouTube. So the replay will be on YouTube tomorrow. But those of you that joined me last night, we had a great one hour. I'm not used to being on the other side of the fence. I'm used to doing the interviewing. They interviewed me. So I shared a lot. And one interesting thing came up, and I thought about it later because I watched the replay just to see. Well, a couple funny things happened. I had positioned the camera. Well, okay, the living room is finished, but I haven't hung the paintings yet. So that would have been a perfect backdrop, right? And I am setting up a sewing room there, but that's in stage one right now. You know how long that's going to take? Remember how long the wallpaper took? Yeah. So I wouldn't expect anything happening overnight unless all of you are coming to my house to help. So I found a nice corner. Wynn bought me roses. He's so cute. He said, you have to have roses in the shot. But the sun was setting right over there. So <laughs> throughout the interview, all of a sudden you'd see little white flecks little white flex <laughs> Casey thought I looked like an angel that's not what happened <laughs> but anyways we had a lot of good laughs those two I feel like I have two sewing friends for life it's amazing when you meet people online even though you're not in person as I am with you you have sewing friends and you have sewing friends from all over the world and it's awesome but I'm going to leave today with a question I'm not leaving right now but I'm gonna leave you guys with the thought for the day that I'll ask you at the end 
because one of the questions they ask is what keeps you grounded? So I'm asking you that. What keeps you grounded? That one caught me completely off guard. I was thinking sewing, business, fishing. What keeps you grounded? That is such a great question. If you watch the interview, you will hear uh, my full story of what keeps me grounded. But the first thing that came to mind was faith. I didn't even have to think twice about it. But then after thinking about it later, I thought, well, yes, it's faith. But then in order comes Win and my family. Because to give you a laugh on that, well, Win is, as you all know, the biggest supporter ever. He's my right hip or left hip. It depends which one is working the best that day. <laughs> but family, family keeps you grounded in a different way. If you're ever feeling over boastful, they'll keep you humble. <laughs> If you're ever feeling underperforming, they will boost you up. So blessings to all of you that have a family like that. But if you don't, you probably have friends like that. So I'm going to leave you with that question while we go through the show today. And I'll, I'm going to ask you again at the end. But keep that in your mind. What keeps you grounded? Myra, that was a great question. Totally got me off guard. And I've been thinking about it ever since. All right. So let's get into sewing. So uh, a couple things. Like I said, it's not going to be a long show today. But... I have a few fun things to show you. I see many of you <laughs> showing up. I just have to put up a couple of these comments. Celeste, a sugar high from ice cream. <laughs> they need to increase their sugar tolerance. More sugar, more sugar. Yeah, that's what they said, more sugar. I think their parents were like, oh my gosh. Do you know what you're doing, Angela? <laughs> of course I do. Sugar high, let them run around the yard for like, I don't know, two hours, and then send them home. <laughs> and they'll sleep all the way home. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Mary Ann said, this is what ants are for. Definitely. I see a lot of new people coming in. Uh, Pam, hello, hello. So, uh, okay, a couple of things that I did this week, but before I get to that, let's go to these. Remember when I showed you these? Remember, not remember. I showed you these, my purple pants. Yeah, my Easter egg pants. I showed you these the other week and I forgot to tell you one of the most important things, which will help you with upcycling your closet or fitting or whatever you want to call it. So let me just move things around here. I just ran back in the office. I can't even believe. Oh, goodness. I'll show you what's going on. But oops, hold on one second. See if I can squeeze you forward. <laughs> All right, guys. Sorry. Okay. Here is my pant leg. Now, I took the hem out. I don't know why. Probably to show somebody how I hemmed this. But a few of you asked me about this hem. Why is there a double side pleat on the side? Do you see this panel? I'll turn the light off for a second. Do you see this panel right here? It blends in pretty good. Let me show you from the inside. Oh, and by the way, this panel goes all the way up the side. And here's the hidden zipper. Remember? Okay, let's just go in here. This will give you what a really fun idea. This is actually in style right now with this extra strip if it was in a different color. So now you can really see the strip. I press the seam allowances open. Now, do you know how old these are? Really old, and look at that, because they were pressed with a Taylor's clapper. They haven't moved. That's awesome. All right, so come back up here, and I'm going to talk to you about what that strip is for. All right, you there? That strip came in handy because this fabric does not stretch. And would you know, I did something really not smart, which was use, this is very, very old, but I had a sloper that was for stretch, similar to the stretch jeans that I'm making now, but a little bit different, a higher waist side zipper. Well, this fabric doesn't stretch. So after I made these, which you know how long these took, I have the embroidered pockets and everything. There was no way I was going to get rid of these. But when I went to put them on, I know, let's see, this would be, hmm, it looks like an inch and a half that I had to add to each side. That would be three inches, which would be two, three sizes. I did not gain three sizes in two days by the time I made these pants and put them on. And I was so perplexed. What on earth happened? Well, I measured wrong. Not only did I measure wrong, I believe I left the seam allowances off of my sloper and forgot to add them when I'm sewing. You know, all those mistakes that we all make that you all think that I don't make, I do. So I thought, okay, 
I have to save these pants. I'm going to wear this Easter egg outfit. So <laughs> I cut the strips of the same fabric, but I'm showing you this now because this is in style if this was a different color. Basically, this is one long strip of fabric. I did not add any curves for the hip mark, nothing else, just one long straight piece of fabric that I added to the front and the back. And guess what? Then I could get them on. Well, I know I couldn't get them on today. This was like 20 years ago. But that's a tip for you. If you have a pair of pants that you want to recycle, upcycle, or a pair of pants that doesn't fit anymore, this is the really kicker. Remove the waistband. Well, you could actually leave the waistband on, too, if you want to, and add that strip right into the waistband. Open up that entire side seam. Figure out how much you need to add to the entire leg. The thing that's going to be very important is that that strip that goes down the entire side is the same width from the hem all the way up. So I'm going to grab my paper here, and this is your pattern hack for the day. All right, I have my camera on backwards, so sorry if it's a little awkward. All right, so this is your pants. If this is your front, usually you have a little bit of a hip curve, right? And here's your back, and you'll usually have like a dart probably. You could do this with jeans too, so I mean that the only difference would be you'd have a yoke in there. Give me a thumbs up and tell me you can see that, okay? I always think you can see, and then later on somebody will say, I can't see you. <laughs> All right. Yep. I can see the thumbs coming in. All right, so here you go. Take this strip of fabric. Make sure that it's the same width from top to bottom. All right? Add a seam allowance. Now, what are you going to do with this seam? This is your regular pants. Now, if your pants are already sewn together and you're trying to give yourself some more room, figure out how much room you need to add. Now, let's just say you only need it in this area right here, and you don't need it from there down. What you're going to do is you're going to open the side seams, lay your pants out nice and flat like that, and if this is where you're, you know that you need to add this extra, and here you don't, what you'll do is you'll make yourself a nice curve inside this line that will be half the width of this. So follow along. Let's just say this is, uh, let's just use two inches wide for this strip right now. And then you add seam allowances. So this entire strip is two inches wide. If you need to add two inches in the hip area, you would add this in here and add this in here. Okay, this would be fine. And then you would remove one inch right there and one inch right here to make this where when you're finished here, the leg would be the same width as it was before. Does that make sense? So you can add that strip. You can add this to jeans. You can add it to anything else that you want to. So one thing, just so I don't totally confuse you, when you're adding this strip, figure out what you need to add for each leg. So if you only needed two inches for the entire pant leg, then this would be one inch. Do you see what I mean? So you have to do the math on that. But what I have, I've done this quite a few times with pants. So this isn't the first time I screwed this up. Or there'd be times where I gained weight or something like that. I'm sure, I am 100% sure that that would be from working out. It wouldn't be from like sitting on the couch or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, right? I can feel you laughing with me. So if you have a great pair of pants that you want to save, even a skirt, it works great for. You just open those side seams. You can either remove the waistband and add it you know, to the waistband or just cut right through the waistband and add that strip from top to bottom. The only reason that in this pair of pants that I did not have to add that into the waistband is because I sewed these from scratch. So after I add those panels, I recut my waistband to add that extra six inches. Yeah. So I can't even imagine. I must have cut these. <laughs> I mean, you have to think. I mean, I'm not a big person or anything, but this is how wide the thigh was on these. What was I thinking? I don't know. Maybe it would have fit my knees back then. I don't know. But anyways, that is your fashion tips. Do you have any um, questions about that? Because that's something, if you look at some of the fashion magazines right now, they show jeans 
with a different color stripe going down the side. They show pants with a different stripe going down the side. Just think of like the running pants. Yeah, so it's very easy. So what kind of fabrics would be good for that? Well, you'd want to find a fabric that's comparable in weight and stretch. It doesn't necessarily have to be stretch, but in weight to the fabric of the pants. So for this one, this is silk shantung. I'm not sure if this is shantung or dupioni. I'm thinking it's shantung because it's so thin. I had the same fabric. I, I just cut this down the salvage, actually. So thankfully, I had enough fabric. But if I was using denim, you could use a thick cotton. Or if you had a really cool cotton, like a quilting cotton, would be really fun. But that's not thick enough. So what you could do is take a piece of denim and put the cotton over it and use that as the long strip. That would be very cute. Or I don't think, I would not add interfacing to that strip. Because you know what's going to happen? Every time you sit down, your pants are going to wrinkle in the outside leg. It's going to look very funny. Uh, when you wash it, it could pull away if it's a fusible. I would definitely stay away from the interfacing for that stripe. Now, if you just have a pair of pants that you want to add a stripe to, to be on trend, you can just take a strip of fabric, fold under the seam allowances, half an inch. I usually use half of an inch, but you could use quarter of an inch, whatever you want. What I would probably do is, let me bring it back down here and I'll show you how to just design your own pattern. This could be, this would work on any pair of pants, one that even doesn't need to add an extra strip. So I would cut this piece here, however wide you need it. I would run this to the sewing machine, nice straight stitch, and then I would run it through the side, whatever your seam allowance is. So if it's a fourth of an inch or a half of an inch, do that. Turn the fabric in, just like we do with the Delilah, and press that seam allowance, use the clapper, but this thread, this basting stitch here, in case I didn't say that, that's a basting stitch. Turn it in, press it with the iron, with the clapper, make it nice and secure. And then on your jeans or on your pants, if this is your outside leg seam, <laughs> that's a sketch for you. Try doing that backwards, by the way, upside down. You would lay that piece of fabric right over this, right over your side seam. You could even use a little bit 505 spray or something like that to keep it in place. And then I would just go down and do a nice top stitching down this side and a top stitching up this side. And that would cover up that entire seam and you would have your little leg, your sporty leg, I should say. So what do you think of that idea? If you try it, I would love for you to share photos, by the way. <laughs> Clovis says she has a lot of skirts that need that. Well, you know what? It, it's so simple, Clovis. And it's uh, skirts are even easier than pants, actually. Um, military stripe. Yes, perfect. That's exactly what you would call it, a military stripe. Satin stripes. Yes, Peg, I've seen that. Very cute. Oh, here's the, you guys are so creative. I give one idea and you blow it out of the water. <laughs> Patricia says, add embroidery, embroidery to the strip. Now that is a good idea. I love that. <laughs> oh, we got a few people just popping in to say hi. Oh, here's a good idea. Leslie, lace would be gorgeous. Okay, so depending on where you're going, you could layer the lace over a different color fabric. So let's just say your lace was black and underneath you is a cream color or white. Or if your jeans are white or something like that, you could use a multicolored lace or a black lace and put white fabric underneath. That would really make it stand out. If you really wanted to go the, um, <laughs> well, I don't think I would go just lace. Because if it goes all the way up, you're going to have a lot to see. Although we have seen people wear that, like on the red carpet and stuff. But I would probably put a piece of fabric behind it. But lace would be gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, if you have a pair of pants or something that you just want to add that strip to, you can buy lace that's two inches wide and both ends are finished, maybe scalloped, and just attach that. You could attach it by just stitching a regular stitch and just following the scallops or stitch it on by hand. If you're, if it's, well, if it's a skinny leg, you might have to stitch the bottom by hand because it's hard to get into that leg. But um, a couple ideas. That's a great idea. I absolutely love that. Oh, goodness. We're going to be rolling with ideas. Here we have another embroidery, somebody says. Okay, here's a question. 
to stop just one sec as I'm scrolling up because I'll lose your questions if I don't answer this now. Uh, Celeste asks, if I am embroidering on knit, do I stretch the knit and then embroider or just embroider on the knit when it is not stretched? Celeste, that is a good question and it um, has two answers. It depends how tight, where the knit's going and how tight it is. Okay, so for example, I'm wearing my Rachel today. I had to dress up for my board meeting. <laughs> yeah, this is dressing up. And uh, so this, if I embroidered on this knit right here, sorry, I'm hitting the mic on you. If I embroidered on this, this is loose. So I would not need to stretch this at all. Now, do you remember me talking about my tank top from the World Sailfish Tournament many years ago? It's made out of that, oh gosh, I know you guys will laugh when I say this, but you know the, the <laughs> underwear tops that I always say that look like wife beaters? It's just a term, okay? <laughs> well, those are like this wide, and I'm wondering if I have even something around here. Hmm. I couldn't. I'll have to go through my stash, because I was also looking for that jacket I talked about in the show yesterday, which I'll have to bring next week, because I can't find it. Um, so if, if you have a ribbed knit that it is this big when you pull it out of the dresser, and when you put it on, it's this big, well, you need to figure out, is the embroidery going like right here, where it's going to be stretched way out? You need to figure out how much you're going to stretch. So if it's in the chest area, what I usually do is I will lay the, the top just completely flat and put two fabric markings. So say your fabric markings are one inch apart. Then put the top on and measure how wide the marking is after it's on. So say it's four inches instead. So then I would stretch that fabric four inches before I embroider. If you don't, you'll end up with a world sailfish tank top like I have, where the tank top's this big when it comes out of the drawer, and you put it on, but the world sailfish still stays this small, and the whole part of the top is real tight, and then everything else stretches out. It's very awkward. So there is your two versions of what to do for a knit. That was a really good question, by the way. So let's see what else we got coming in. Everybody's saying yes. Oh, here's a good one. Annette, back to those pants with the strip. Faux leather or suede. That's a great idea. And you want to know why? Because you don't have to even fold the edges under. Those edges don't fray usually. So you could just have a nice top stitching down each side and maybe about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And that faux suede would look awesome. Yeah. Okay. Rob wants to know... Uh, what show did you talk about the separate cover stitch machine? I think it was you. It was me, Rob. And I actually have three videos now on YouTube about that. How to thread the top cover stitch, how to do the chain stitch, and I think I have one more video that hasn't been posted yet. How to cover stitch in a circle. And how to take your threads out so they don't pop out. That's coming. So if you go on my YouTube channel, and if you don't know where that is, just go to AngelaWolf.com. If you scroll down on the far right side, click on YouTube, and it'll take you right there. I had a new video that went up yesterday for surging. It was from the It's So Easy episodes in number 12, season 12, and it was how to troubleshoot, how to troubleshoot your stitches. It's like a two-minute video. <laughs> like you can't even like get sidetracked during that video. It's so fast. And tomorrow, speaking of, I'm going to skip now to this for a second. I'll get back to the rest of your questions. Do you, you remember this, right? The Upcycle Project? Okay, I love that sweater. And I've actually worn it a couple times. It's so cute. So that was a turtleneck remake. I like that a lot. Let me get that. Let's see if I can get that full. I always hit the wrong button. There you go. I'm little. That's big. So that was that really uncomfortable turtleneck. Well, I have another one now. Let's see if I have that in here. Wrong photo. There we go. Remember this? Remember uh, this outfit behind me? See if I can bring this back up. Did you notice the neckline was different? This has been in my background for like the last four weeks. <laughs> I finally got the blog post done. The video, as a teaser, is coming up tomorrow on my YouTube channel, and it will be on Brother's channel with the full blog post next week. So, but you'll be able to see the video on YouTube tomorrow. I think it's, uh, I don't remember what time I do Thursdays, but two o'clock or something like that. What do you think? That is so much better. So there's the original and that turtleneck, by the way, in case you missed this. 
is this high. Yeah, like that high. The new boat neck is so comfortable and so cute. So tell me what you think. I'm really curious. So here you go in case you missed that. That's how tall this is. I thought I'd save this. My gosh, I could almost use it as a sleeve. <laughs> That's how long that thing was. I don't know. I'll find something for it. So a couple tips with this. This really and literally took maybe, including taking photographs and video, like a half an hour. It takes way longer to edit. But if I were just sewing this top and doing this upcycle project, 15 minutes max, max. So I'm just going to bring myself back up on screen and take this down for a sec. Let me show you something. So this lady right here, see if I can bring this up just a little bit. All right. Can you see? All right. Let me turn my daylight off. <laughs> I have it on there because it uh, really lightened it up. All right. So this top right here, all this is is elastic on the inside and I'll show you that in a photo but what you have to be careful of if you're gonna do this on your top this tank top had this beautiful design on it which you can kind of see in the picture but you'll really see it in the blog it's very obvious there so I'll just sit on my new machine here <laughs> uh, this what I did is I started cutting right around the neckline so if I have this in place right here like this I started cutting really high because what if this was one of those turtlenecks that just starts to fray? Well, I would be in a lot of trouble. So I cut up here and then I pulled the fabric and realized, you know what? It's not going to fray. So then I went ahead. I chalked marked my line in where I wanted it. I went ahead and cut right on top of that. I stitched elastic to the wrong side of the fabric. I tucked it in. I tacked it, tacked it, <laughs> say that fast 10 times. I tacked it at each shoulder seam. And if you are worried about this slipping up while you're wearing it, which I left this on purpose, but now I'm going to go back and do just a couple more little tacks. Just back and forth with your sewing machine just a little bit. Keep it in place. Yeah. I think it turned out fabulous. I would wear that immediately now. So a turtleneck that I bought for, I think, I actually purchased this at a resale shop. I was looking for the fishbowl. <laughs> Couldn't help but walk by the clothing aisle. And I think it was like four bucks, but I loved this print and I love this fabric. So now I have a very cute top. So what do you think about it? The video is coming out tomorrow on my YouTube. So you'll be able to catch that. Celeste wants to know, did you quarter it to get the right neckline? You'll see it in the video of what I did for that. But what you have to be very careful is that your elastic is at least one to two inches tighter than your actual neckline or it'll gap open. I agree. I, what kind of elastic did you use? Cheryl wants to know what kind of elastic. I just used half inch wide. Um, oh, no, that's not it. I thought that was it. That's twill tape. Not sports elastic, but it's thinner like that. It's not the kind with all the real big ridges that doesn't twist around. It has to be comfortable. So if you know what sports elastic is, it feels like that. I think I have a whole roll here. Actually, I do. I'm looking right at it. But Wynn is not here, so he can't reach it for me. It's on that side of the studio. I have probably, oh my gosh, thousands of yards. I'll put that elastic up in case you are in a place where you can't find it, and then you'll know exactly what I'm using. So if you place an order down the line, throw that in there, and you can upcycle a sweater. It's half inch wide. Peg says she loves the upcycle. I know. Melinda says she loves the project. <laughs> yes. And very nice change to a straight neckline. Underwear elastic? No, Janet, it's not underwear elastic. That's too thin. Well, actually, I have a picture. Hmm. Let's see. And I have seven minutes before I have to run. Oh, I'll get back to this because this is awesome. There, see that? Now, that looks like a little bit of a hot mess right there. But I took a photo of this just to show you. I used a zigzag stitch on here for people who don't have a serger. If you have a serger, it would be so much faster to run it through the serger and you're done. But, um... I zigzagged that's that so can you see closely what that elastic is it just has the lines going sideways not both ways all right so while we're there oh you can't see that because you're not on the screen <laughs> sorry okay technology hold on one sec here there we are 
Okay, I'll get right back to this. There is the, that's a terrible shot, but, and the end, it actually is not stretched out. The elastic is smaller than the top, but either way, you take the elastic, you cross it over, do a couple zigzag stitches. This is where I was telling you that I used a zigzag stitch along the edge just to show people who don't have a serger. I like to keep it open to both ways. This is a project that would be perfect for a beginner. And when people see you as a serger and they don't have one, they get upset. So I try to make all parties happy. How's that? <laughs> okay. Now, let me get back to where it is. Hold on a second. There's the improvement. So this is how long ago, by the way, you could tell by the length of my hair and the color of my hair. Not that I color my hair, but I was in the sun a lot. I tried that top on at least three months ago to do this project. So now my hair's shorter, a little darker, <laughs> like the before and after. <laughs> okay, this, have you seen this? I posted this on Facebook. So this is so exciting. I couldn't believe this. So let me just see if I could bring this up. I was reading this and I had to actually pinch myself. So, oh yes, it's Brothers 110th anniversary win an exclusive backstage pass. Let's see if I can get this comment off there, sorry. There you go, underwear elastic. No, now we're on to, to sweepstakes and contest. So this is my brother and this is what I wanna show you, yes? That is me. So this is what you can enter to win. That brother is giving away three days and two nights at the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Resort in Orland, Florida. Okay, Orlando, not Orland. <laughs> Orland Park, Illinois, Orlando, Florida. Hmm. We'll go for the Orlando, Florida. Okay, is that awesome or what? But not only that, you get to come to a private brother event. This is only for dealers to see all the new products coming out before anybody else sees it. And you actually get to meet and greet me, which is awesome, for one hour, which I can't wait. So, okay, go ahead, say it. No, actually, don't say it. I think some members of my family, isn't that who keeps you grounded, said, you know what, I'll skip you, but I'll go to Orlando. <laughs> so that's okay, too. <laughs> but um, if you win, it's airline tickets. I saw somebody write, that's a long drive for me. Airline tickets for two people so you can bring your friend and we have one hour to hang out so if you want a private sewing lesson if you want to play on the machines or if you just want to hang out and have lunch I'm good to go so yeah that is a very very cool prize they're also giving away uh, 10 different giveaways leading up to this so oh you can't miss this and there's more to that giveaway by the way you'd have to go to the website it's on my Facebook page you can click on there it's on brother sews Dot com. It's on their blog. It's on Brother Facebook page. Make sure you like their page and give them thumbs up because this is a very, very cool giveaway. When they said they were giving this, I'm like, this is awesome. So good luck, everyone. It's free to enter. So I think that's pretty cool. What do you think of that? And are you going to enter? I already saw a ton of people say they'd already entered. I think it's amazing. And what else did we have going on with Brother? Yeah, this thing behind me, I'm getting ready to, I'm working on a lot of projects right now and I can't share them with you because they're for brother and they're coming out in a few months. So I can't share them with you yet. I'm dying to because they're gorgeous. I'm a little biased too though. So one of the couple projects I'm working on are using some of their different machines and this is the six needle. So if you've ever wondered if you order a multi-needle machine, next week I'll show you a different machine, but this is the six needle. This is how it comes. So last week when somebody was knocking on the door, do you remember that? And I said, go, I'm live, see you later. Well, that was the delivery guy with this machine and one more machine up in the front. You see how big these boxes are? <laughs> well, don't worry. I'm gonna tape a video that shows the unboxing of that six needle. Cause some people say, I don't know if there's room in my sewing studio or whatever. When I pull that out of there, I'll bet you I'll be able to fit it on a corner table and embroider away. So even though I have my studio is huge, I do all my sewing back here. So if you can't tell, it's a little messy. So <laughs> anyway, the poor guy, he stood out front and Terry, who's our uh, building uh, head of security, helped him. He signed off for the machines and the guy said, that lady wouldn't let me come in with her delivery. <laughs> so not only that, 
some of the tenants across the hall made the comment that maybe I should quit shopping on Amazon. So, hey, sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. <laughs> but anyways, I had to share those with you. Uh, I will let you know what I think of that machine. I haven't used it yet. I saw it last year at B2B. Do you remember the live video where I showed you all the new things coming out? That's what you could be at. The private event, nobody else is allowed to go there except for the two winners. So very cool. And I'll let you know what I think of the six needle. I think it's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to being able to embroider faster. And I'll keep you posted on that. So if you have any questions, roll them in. Although today is a very fast day because I have another meeting, I know there was a few more things I had to share with you. Let's see. Uh, oh, yes. Keep your eye out on Instagram because I have a little contest coming up over the weekend. I think it'll start with daylight. We have a couple few giveaways we're going to be doing for the next few months. If you're in, let's see, where are they right now? Spring Quilt Market, they're in booth 1026, okay? So all I have to say is if you're there, take a photo in the booth, go say hi to the Eds, Autumn might be in there, take a selfie, post it on Instagram, and hashtag me, because there's two giveaways. So that's one thing. So while you're there, go do that. And make sure that you hashtag Angela Wolf so I can see it, and hashtag Daylight. But we have a couple, couple things coming up. You'll see it over the weekend, and I'll announce it next Wednesday, in case you're not on Instagram. Uh, let's see. Did you enter for the sewing machine? All these giveaways, it's hard to keep track. So all brands, that's the giveaway for May. I made it for the entire month because it was so awesome. And that is to win a Brother sewing machine. Let's see if I have that up here. The link is in uh, the description for this Facebook page. And if you're watching this on YouTube, which means it's Saturday and not Wednesday, I will put it in the description below because you can enter. I'm drawing a random winner on, I believe it's May 30th. Don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure if May 30th is the Wednesday, that is the day. Okay, let's see. I've got time for two more comments, and then i got to run. I hate to leave, guys, but I have to. Uh, <laughs> Melody says, yes, ma'am, I already entered. Cynthia, enter. everybody's entering. Oh, my gosh, this just sounds so much fun. I would love to hang out with you for an hour. Oh, I know. And Linda says, so sad for the Canadians. Well, Brother Canada is different than Brother USA. That's all I can say. But maybe Brother Canada will do something really cool as well. You never know. We have to maybe just send him a note, right? <laughs> Rhonda said she wants to win so bad. And where did you say you posted it? Darlene, are you looking for up uh, for this giveaway? It's on my Facebook page. It's also in the group. So I will post it again if you can't find it or send me a private message and I'll send you a link. <laughs> Susan says, I agree, Melody. I just love to win to one hour with Angela. So Susan, you and Melody are opposite of my family. <laughs> they want to go to Orlando. Well, you just live like two hours from me. We should just have a so day. Wouldn't that be fun? I think so. I guess I have to be here for that too, right? Oh, thanks, guys. You guys are so cute. I would love to meet you. I would love to meet you too. Oh, yes, Sandy, you can. You can bring a friend. I believe it's for two people. And look at this. You guys are great. Gift cards. Yes, there is a gift card in there. I think it's a 500 gift card that goes with it. Oh, yeah. This is going to be just an awesome trip. Would love this. Just to pick your brain for an hour would be worth it. Well, Jane, if you're there, I will make sure to wear my hat so you don't pick out all my hair. But I will definitely let you pick my brain. <laughs> that's my husband's favorite phrase. And I never hear anybody say that anymore. So that's just hilarious. Can I pick your brain for a minute? That's what he'll say. Oh, that might hurt. <laughs> okay. So I see a ton of you saying you're entering. I'm so sorry I got to make today's show short. But I got to run because I have another meeting. I love you all. Have a great day. Leave your comments below. If you're on YouTube on Saturday, leave your comments below. I always go back throughout the entire week until next Wednesday when I see you at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can always message me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Actually, Instagram and Twitter are the best because Facebook, I get a lot of junk in there, and sometimes I don't check it every day. So you could message me, say hi. I wish you a great week. I can't think of anything else I'm missing that was super important except for this giveaway. So I am... Hoping that one of my fans actually wins. So I'm hanging out with somebody fun. All right, you all. Have a good week. 
And don't forget, the question to mull over for the whole next week, and you can leave me comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. What keeps you grounded? What is it in your life that keeps you grounded? That is your thought for the day. I will see you next week. Next week, we'll be back on 1.30. No meetings next week that I know of. And I will talk to you soon. All right, guys. Bye. <laughs>